Hey everyone, welcome here in my little studio, finally. Uh, Annabelle Sanchez is here already. Hey sweetheart, good to see you here again. <laughs> obviously, obviously you are the first one. How are you doing today? Welcome everyone. Uh, so today I'm gonna do a little production live stream because I'm celebrating my new release on Anjuna Beats, which is my new EP, Delirium and Soul Seeker. So it just came out today. And I'm gonna show the project files of these two tracks, if you are interested. Um, yeah, I just need to check if the stream is working right, but I think it's working. <laughs> First, let me know you all how is it going today, and how are you all doing lately, these in these weird times. Oh, there's already two hundred people. Wow, that's crazy. So yeah, I was thinking I should just uh, play the tracks first, um, and then I'm gonna talk about the projects. But that's good. So the first one is is called Soul Seeker, and this is the the final version. <laughs>
So yeah, basically that's it, guys. Uh, this is Soul Seeker. It just came out today on Anjuna Beats. <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about this track, the project file of this. Uh, today is gonna be like a pr production session. So um, I'm trying to explain the instrument instruments I use, the synthesizers, and it's gonna be more like a technical stream. But I'm trying to read all the comments. I already see so many familiar names Gabor is here obviously Anabas Sanchez and pretty much all all the names are familiar so welcome guys so good to see you all so today okay so this is uh, my workflow is about two separated uh, things when I, when I create a track I'm trying not to focus on the technical side of things. I just I'm just dropping in sounds and and uh, you know it's just don't care about, care about the mixing and uh, all the technical stuff. And usually it's the first few bits sounds like shit, but the ID is already there. But then I export the stems, all the stems, and I create a new project and start. To mix down from scratch so that's what you heard this is like the final mix down as you see it's all audio audio files and so this is like the final production but i can show you the um like the basic basic idea of the the track before it's it was mixed because that's where i can show the the synthesizers and everything i used so I'm opening that one. But in the meantime, yeah, I'm trying to read all the comments and if you if you want to ask anything about anything, pretty much I try to answer. Or just let me know how are you all doing because I'm interested because it's so weird I haven't met people for ages. Obviously as many of you, but it's just crazy, isn't it? So it's it's a kind of amazing to feel like I'm surrounded surrounded with people that's why I, I do the streams actually because it feels like I'm around people and I, I actually yeah it's it's good so this is the the project file the original and as you can see there are plugins here and it's not just all audio files but it sounds way different I mean it's it's totally different because it's it's as I told you. It just I dropped some many sounds in it without thinking about the technical side of of the music production. So this is how it sounds before mixing. <laughs> it's not that different but it's not really punchy and clean you know it's so also I changed the kick in the end because it's it's just like it's just a weak sounding kick I mean it's not so bad but not for this production maybe that's how I felt so yeah here's a bass line <laughs> I think it's a quiet fatty one. It it comes from native instruments FM8 and it's called lately bass which is like maybe you know it it's like uh there was a huge classic synthesizers the Yamaha DX7 and DX8 and this this pr preset called lately bass so it's in so many uh dance productions from the early 2000s. I just just love this preset. So I made this groovy bassline with this sound. Um, obviously, there is some OTT on it. If you don't know this plugin, just just download it. It's free. It's from Steve Duda. It's like a mastermind of of the plugins. He created Serum. Serum, <clears throat> obviously, every single music producer uses it pretty much. 
so this is a free plugin also and uh, it's just crazy good it, it's like a multi-band compressor compressor but uh, it's just makes every sound like to your face like I, I can't really explain but it just brings something up some really nice mids and, and high end <laughs> yeah. OTT is for everything pretty much yeah I just cut cut out the really lows and high frequencies I'm not even sure if that makes any sense on this one but I just did it um just a little bit of EQ, there's some side chain on it. And oh yeah. So this is like the second layer of the same baseline rhythm, um, which is basically just a, a simple, uh, like the, the basic preset from Massive. I just put a trash on it. And I use this because I felt that this frequency area is mixing some is, is missing somehow from the from the baseline. And so I layered these two together. I mean you can tell it's something is missing without it, right? So there are some other channels. Oh, yeah. These are some like stereo effects kind of just add a nice um, space to the whole bass line, I guess. And also some rhythm because I use this uh, gatekeeper plugin on this one. Similar to LFO tool, but I just uh, it's a little bit more complex. You can use more effects on on this one. So this is the bass section, and also there are some kind of like small glitchy parts which I love. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds stupid in itself, but it just uh, makes sense in the mix. It gives more, gives some something interesting in the in in the sound. Those small little de details, those little spicy things, what I love, the small details. And it just takes time because usually I I export the baseline itself out, and then I try to to play with with different effects. As you can see, it's all. Um, it's all audio, audio channels already, so I just uh, put whole different kind of experimental things on the original baseline, and it became like this silly kind of. <laughs> I didn't even know what is this, but <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I mean, right? But the point is, I, I use the original uh, sound, so it somehow... Um, oh, sorry, did you hear this sound? It probably just someone subscribed to my channel, I guess. So thanks for that. So the point is just uh, to use the original sound, because if you make different variations from the original one, it still feels like it's the same sound, but it's more interesting. <laughs> So yeah, that's what I usually do. Instead of adding a bunch of lay new new layers, just uh, just play with the original one because there's so m many possibilities. You can use so many effects to make it interesting or give it more depth, I guess. So yeah, there is this uh, clap. I think it's this stupid loop, but I, I, what I loved about this one is just every single clap is slightly different. If you check it, just this 
some of the flaps are like a uh, few milliseconds earlier and or later so it gives like that organic feel you know what what is uh, interesting it just makes your ears interested for longer time i guess it's just not the same robotic um, computer kind of generated rhythms but slightly different on every second hit and these small details you you wouldn't believe it but if all these small details um, sums up together and in the end it's gonna be it's gonna be different I guess what usually you find on beatport but just that's my opinion the point is I guess to have your own little stupid ideas about these things because it might be not making any sense to someone else but I believe in this and uh, I think that's the point <laughs> So yeah, what what else? Um, yeah, a bunch of percussions. Oh, another clap. That's surprising. Oh yeah, I love that one. This one is... I don't know, this gives some different vibe to the whole thing slightly techno-ish a little bit darker i just love it I try to use the, the old school like uh, Roland TR-808 kind of hi-hats because you know the bass line is like the classic lately bass from the early 2000s and I try to use these old school sounds I don't know why I just had this concept in my mind I guess uh, where do I get my percussion samples uh, the thing is I don't even know. I have a bunch of sample CDs because I used to work with uh, loop masters, and I have like I don't know five terabytes of sample libraries, which doesn't make any sense because I can't even use like ninety nine percent of it. I don't even know what are those. So usually, lately, I use uh, Splice for samples that does the easiest but I also made my own sample libraries which you can find on freshly squeezed samples there's like two huge sample libraries from me so I use those as well uh, because I'm also a sound designer maybe you don't know that but I, I work as a sound designer as well I make my own sound sets and sample libraries yeah I, I actually made quite a lot of those um yeah but in this one i think so yeah the next one is this little it's a lush chord Yeah, no, the first initial like uh, part of the project, I think, as I remember, remember how I started it with this little um, chord idea. And actually, the funny thing is this vocal sample. Because uh, maybe you don't believe it, but that's my voice. <laughs> I actually sang on this one. If I remove the effects and actually it's like one octave higher so I put it into the original place <laughs> I'm not really proud of this one but uh, I think it kind of works <laughs> it's funny in itself but I think it it works in the in the mix right 
I mean, it gives like nice harmonies. Oh, also this one is also mine, like this this part. Oh yeah, that's kind of. I actually love this one. It's like an ancient Egyptian kind of. I don't know. It's weird. <laughs> so this is the original. No, no. Yeah, but as you can see, like there's so many possibilities. Just put some effects on it, transpose it for, to like seven semitones higher, and you get this. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool, isn't it? There's like a saturation, like an amp simulator on it, a huge reverb, and that's it. So basically, the, the main idea was this. Okay, so, yeah, Dying Camel, that's, yeah, that's a nice analogy. Uh, could be that one. Space Camel, yeah. <laughs> that's actually quite great artist name space camo it's like a side trance artist name i love it so the next one um yeah so there's some other synthesizers playing the same melody and uh, the way i did this cube is a, has a great feature but i believe Pretty much every every doll probably has something similar, but it can take out the the notes from the vocal samples really easy, and even the like the pitch band uh, informations as well. So it took out with like one click. As you can see, it's such a weird pitch band automation, but it basically plays back the whole like vocal melody. It sounds a little bit off, because obviously I was off. But I wanted to keep it like that, because it's it's more organic, much more organic than... I would just place everything in, in its proper place. Uh, I mean, that would be more perfect, but uh, probably not so pleasant to the ears, or not so interesting, I guess. That's another silly th thing, I think. I do, but works for me, I guess. So yeah, there is a bunch of synths like this. This one is a uh, Spire, just a nice little high synth. It's basically like a super so. Oh yeah, this this synthesizer is like a thousand years old, and. I'm not sure if anyone else uses it, but I just just really like it. Sometimes I use it for a sound or... You know, that's another thing about music production, in my opinion. It's just good to be a little bit different, because if every single producer uses the same synthesizers, like Silent, or Serum, or Spire, it just... If you think about it, everything will sound a little bit the same. And... Even just if you use something else, it doesn't mean it have to be better than anything. It's just different, you know. That's my opinion. That's why I use synths like this, like like an old Korg Poly Six. Even the synthesizer, even the plugin is old already. I mean, look at this type. <laughs> it's ridiculous, but I just love to use these. It's a huge reverb, reverb on it. I love this reverb actually. Uh, the EOS. I use it quite a lot. Um, yeah, so there's a, a bass line in the breakdown. 
Just nothing special, it's just a really nice saw baseline. Oh, it comes from Trillion. The good thing about this, this plugin and all the Spectre Sonics uh, plugins, it's like sample based, so they sampled like real analog synthesizer for for these uh, sounds, and you can actually hear it. It's so beefy and just there's some spice on the the mids. There is another one. It's just it's a modulated LFO in this one. You just uh, try to, you know, um, level up the the vibe somehow with this automation. Oh yeah, these pads are quite lush as well. Another synth I use sometimes just to be different. The Absinthe, it's a really old one. So basically the that's it this is the project uh, there's a bunch of like fx sounds just uh, downlifters and uplifters just basically white noises um yeah the thing is it's just uh, 44 channels so it's not a huge deal but what you see actually is like the like the final version before i make the mix down again so the original one had like twice as many channels, I I guess. The point is when I, cr I when I start an idea and and I have an inspiration, usually it takes just a few hours to create something which I I I believe in and I I find interesting. You know, just a thirty seconds long musical idea, and I usually just make it in like one or two hours and the point from there just to f not fuck it up that's my <laughs> that's my whole pl process i mean the the 90 percent of the track basically is done in two hours and the other um, i mean the, i would say like the 60 percent of the track is done in two hours and the other 40 percent is done is like ages so i can but obviously, I just need need to not fuck it up. That's why I'm uh, trying. In the end, I find myself removing so many things I was just throwing in in the beginning, you know. And uh, basically, I'm just polishing and uh, cleaning cleaning up the whole production. <coughs> so these 44 channels is it's, uh, actually not so bad, I guess. So. Yeah, so this is the the final when I I'm um, I'm satisfied with the arrangement and most of the sounds I export I mix down everything separated like the kicks the bass lines everything and then open it up in a new channel because I don't even care about mostly the musical like I um, mean the sonical attributes of the track at this point I don't care about the mixing as you can hear it's just it's so off so that's why um, but I try to separate my workflow in uh, in these two separate things like I only focus on the on the musical side first and when I'm satisfied with the music and the arrangement and most of the sounds I start to remix it again from scratch basically so so this is the remixed version 
Yeah, in the meantime, if you have any questions, just throw it. I try to read it back somehow. <laughs> Space camel, yeah. <laughs> Gonna be my new alias. Sunny camel. Yeah, basically that's... <laughs> that's the thought process in life. Don't fuck it up. That's it. True. <laughs> so, yeah, I changed the kick drum. Uh, that's the... I think that's a huge change, what you hear, obviously. As you can hear, that's... I think that's much more tight. Um, even, like, even if the kick drum wasn't just right, even if you just find a better sample, the whole production becomes so different, it just becomes just right. I don't know. <clears throat> how to say it better by just if the kick drum is off and sometimes you know just you feel that you found a great kick drum but it just uh, you want to fix it to, to to fit into the mix with eq and compression and everything and most of the cases it's just better if you find another sample because it's easier there's so many kick samples out there i even have like three kicks sample packs i have like thousands of kicks and the easiest thing is just go to the next one check the next one and until you find the perfect the, the most fitting to the production because there's no such thing as perfect kick in my opinion <coughs> why windows because i use it for ages i never used actually um apple I, i'm not hating or anything i just started with windows and and I just love Cubase. I used it for such a long time. <clears throat> uh, for arpeggios, I actually bought the synthesizers on Arturia Mini Brew 2. And I love its arpeggios. Uh, it's it's really simple, but the the thing is that it's it's a hardware thing, and I can tweak in the knobs. It's so different than uh, tweaking knobs on plugins. You know, it's just a different feeling, and for me, it's so it's much more in inspirational. So that's uh, what I would say. It's an inspirational tool for arpeggios. That's for sure. favorite plugins I actually I obviously love Serum Spire Silent um, the basics mm, I couldn't say that it's I love something more than another plugin but is everything is different for uh, for dip different purposes I actually love Adam Sabo's uh, Viper synthesizer so shout out to Adam because he made it in four years and it's like really ident it sound is really identical to to access virus so that's that's a huge thing so if you don't know it just check it out why it's called Viper um, I actually love the original virus as well I still have it and actually, I used it in the other production, the Delir Delirium one. So yeah, this is the mix down version where I only focused on the the sonical attributes, the fitting, the the stems, the channels, the instruments together. You know, EQing, compressing. It's for me, it's a different uh, task. So I just don't want to mix it up in my brain to to focus on the music but also the mixing it's just for me it's so hard so that's why i separated it in my workflow and it, it works for me the best i guess so i usually group my bass lines together all the bases to one group as you can see <laughs> Obviously, I used OTT on it with these settings. <laughs> it's just 
it brings everything in your face. Oh yeah, that's funny. So yeah, this is the the EQ on the baseline group channel. And as you can see it's quite funny <laughs> because I've I had another silly um strategy or how you say it, idea for for mixing uh, the channels together. I actually boosted the uh, the harmonics on uh, like on the the main key on the bass line and I boosted different harmonics on the on I think on the the fifth on the the drum section and uh, maybe the thirds on the I, I mean let, let me check it so yeah as you can see I actually created this weird concept about merging the the instruments together as you can see so this one is the bass line this one is the drum section and this is the synthesizer section so i boost different harmonics <coughs> on the different instruments and that's why i thought because they are like um, merging together perfectly and it kind of works sometimes if you if you listen to the, uh, the the instruments in themselves alone, sometimes it's just weird to have a com to have an EQ on them like this because it's it's a quite unhealthy way of EQing. It's not really something what everyone anyone should do actually, but in the mix it kind of works. It's kind of merging everything merging together and makes the whole mix like in uh gluing together like frequency wise i kind of like this technique i don't really use it lately because i just don't i don't know i just experimenting sometimes with, with silly ideas i never seen anyone do this actually and actually I never wanted to to share this little secret but I just don't give a shit anymore so if you want to try it just boost the different harmonics on different instruments and if you think it works for you just just use it use this technique if you actually understood what I said because I'm not even sure <laughs> what I'm talking about anymore <laughs> oh guys it's funny so well, I think in the end it's kind of yeah, it's it's kind of clean and fat. Actually, it's nothing special. It's so easy. I've the, in this project, it's it's really actually straightforward. Just use o OTT on every bus and this uh, silly frequency with this uh, stupid EQ settings. And I think that's it. And on the master channel, I used only. Uh, this is f only for the gain management and a slight boost on the high end. Yeah, some small compression. Ah, uh, yeah, I love this limiter. This is my favorite because it's it's literally invisible. <laughs> uh, I mean, it doesn't. Um, so it's even if you to use it in. Uh, in, in it just so perfectly uh, does its work. Just can't explain. Nothing else works like this one. Um, 
I think I use this on every track. This is my final limiter, the invisible limiter. Yeah, this is, I, I agree, this is the cleanest one. I think that's it. Did I show anything interesting to you guys? Just let me know, or if you wanna ask anything about this project. I actually start uh, with the trackers. I used a software called Mod, Mod Plug Tracker from ages ago. If you know the tracker software, it's like way different <laughs> way of thinking. Um, but that was fun. But I used a uh, Reason. I used FL Studio. It was called Fruit Loops back in those days. Um, And then I think I, I started using Cubase. It was like, uh, I think I used Cubase for like 15 years. Jesus Christ, I'm an old fart. So yeah. Yeah, actually, I did my acoustic panels myself. This is like DIY acoustic absorbers. I'm proud of those because it took me like two weeks to make them. And yeah, I just upgraded these with uh, these lovely lights. It's just like a cheapest RGB lights. It looks so good. <laughs> Alright, I'm opening the other project, Delirium. Uh, so let's check the final version first. Um, it's like the Rockwool, do you know the Rockwool? I don't know the English word for that, but you know the... The Rockwool panels. Yo, if you if you Google it, you probably will find it. I don't really put limiters um, on my buses and not on my channels as well because, in the end, um, it's gonna be. I think it's gonna be over compressed or over limited. So when I I only put some bus compressor, which is usually OTT on my buses, because it's also, it's already, it's it's actually quite much. So if I would even compress any individual channel before, that would be way too much, I guess. But sometimes it works. Some, some of the sounds or basses uh, needed those kind of heavy, way too much compression. But usually I don't really compress that much, only on the buses with OTT. Okay, let me play the uh, the Deli Room track, the final version. Just listen to it together, guys, because it's lovely. <laughs>
Well, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, guys, that's it. I call it hands in the air arena trance. And I wish I could play this in live finally, but I just uh, I can't wait the, the moment I can play this tune live. It would be so good, guys, together somewhere. I don't even care where. I would go to the end of the world just to have a party somewhere with you guys. I hope you feel the same. So yeah, this tune is called Deliri Delirium. It's uh, coming out today on Juno Beats. This was the final version. The same concept as before. This is like the remixed down version. But let me open the, the original one. Oh fuck. <laughs> My cube is crashed. It happens sometimes. Windows. We all love Bill Gates, right? For different reasons. <laughs> and and uh, finally, you can see my desktop uh, with a few icons. Don't even ask me anything. It just I'm a mess. <laughs> yeah, just a few seconds. So yeah, no, again, I opened the wrong one, fuck. <laughs> yeah, Diablo 3, dude, and have you seen the two, the, um, how they told, the upgraded version of Diablo 2? The resurrected one, it's coming out this year. Um, and when I, when I saw the video, I went full excited with with my wife. So we we are huge, yeah, resurrected. We're huge fans of Diablo. <laughs> if you play it, actually, I um, we were thinking to to stream Diablo. Um, I'm not sure if any of you would be a huge fan of the game. Um, or maybe, yeah, I should start streaming it. Maybe not right now, but yeah. So yeah, this is the, the original project of the Delir Delirium. <laughs> Yeah, so as you can hear, it sounds a little bit different, especially on the lower section. This bass line is just killing everything. Well, actually, there's too many, way too many bass lines. <laughs> That's what I was, I was telling before, like, uh, in the end, I'm just finding myself removing channels because it's just way too much. So again, we have a kick drum. It's a quite nice, I actually love to use this kick drum. I use it like every second track of mine. Um, but sometimes I, um, like I only use the, the top of the kick drum because that's what you f hear like, that's what you recognize of the, the kick drum the first few milliseconds, you know, the, the the top. And the rest, you can actually change the low end or the middle of the kick drum. It's gonna be still the same kind of feel if you keep the same high or the transient, if you know what, what, I, what I mean. <clears throat> the thing is, yeah, I think, I think it's quite a nice, I use the same one in uh, Solar Plexus. I think the same one is in Fountain. It's quite trancy. I think it's it's really pun it it's it punches through the mix really nicely. Oh 
yeah, and it's this project is already a remixed project, but I did I did so many things. It was I started this track, and it was a whole different kind of track. But I just loved the the groove of it, so I started another project with the same groove. And as you can see, because this that's why so many audio channels actually. Uh, again, it's a huge mess, but <laughs> I remember I worked on this one so much and it it became completely different in the end. So yeah, this I think this baseline came from Spire, but it's already on the audio channel. <laughs> Nice little percussions. It just <laughs> oh yeah, I use the mezzo uh, percussion. I love mezzo's percussions, and he has, he has a sample pack on splice and. Just I just love everything this guy puts out. It's so interesting the the rhythm the uh, quantization is so interesting. So yeah, the bass lines. Uh, there's so many. I think this is this one is one of the main bass line. Yeah. A, quite a nice layer with this uh, other rolling bass line. It just it's a silent. It's just one of the um, basic presets. It's move bass. I use this a lot because it's so good. And if you process it properly, um, it sounds really good in my opinion. So there's a trash on it. Let me show without without the effects effects. It's not a huge difference, but still you can tell that it's it's more beefy, and it's because of the distortion. Everything is just better with some saturation. It becomes more real or more organic, uh, more pleasant to the ears. Ooh. <laughs> what is that? I, I don't even know what's that. I think I removed this part from the final version. Uh, I think you can tell why. And again, what I, I told before that I used the original rolling baseline, this sam this this baseline. I actually exported it and started to play around with different effects. I don't even know which kind of effects because I just mess around with it, export it, and I drop it back to the project. But you can tell that it's the same baseline, but with different kind of textures. It's another one, but as it's the same sound source, you can tell that it becomes, in the end, it's gonna be one sound, but with different, with more depth. And I think that's that's cool. So the baseline would be like like this. Adding with these little spices, mm, you can make it much more interesting. Everything is, is better with some depth. It's like uh, sonical depth, different, slightly different textures. Uh, I think that's cool. 
but I always, instead of adding a bunch of new layers lately, I'm trying to use the same sound source. So your ear is gonna, actually your brain, I, f I think it, it recognizes that it's the same sound, but uh, so it, it's merging together somehow. And even though it sounds complex, but it's not confusing your or your brain that much. Uh, that's how I feel. <laughs> it's not a ridiculous part. But in itself, this would be a huge baseline. Actually, I started the original idea with this baseline, I think. And I kept it for the low ends, but it just didn't work out in the end. So I think I removed this part as well. Oh, it's a nice little baseline from June. Yeah, I love to mix the the synthesizers with the. Uh, with samples as well, like this is a one-shot baseline from Splice somewhere. Yeah, that's cool. And this is an interesting set. Actually, that's such a lovely sound and synth. I don't really use this synth that much, but I should because it's uh, again, it's so different, and I don't think so many people use it. Um, yeah, but there's a bunch of effects on it. It's a little side trancy. Oh yeah, there's some vocals in it, but it's not my voice in this time. But you can tell. So this is probably, um, yeah, something from Splice with a bunch of effects on it. I use a la photo with this, uh, I would say choppy, choppy effects. And I sometimes I use EOS or some reverb, reverb before the, um, the a la photo. different vocal sample yeah and the synthesizers for the the leads are from virus I think most of the synths are from virus uh, yeah but it's in audio already This pad is actually silent. This baseline is zebra. Oh, <laughs> 
right guys it's proper hand hands in the air vibes I uh, just love it um, yeah so these scenes are mostly from virus uh, but I think you can tell it's, it's somehow different from if you compare a, a, a lead sound from virus to to silent it you can tell that somehow it's I wouldn't say it's better it's just different but in a way where it's more pleasant to the, to the ears so basically it's better but you can make great things with silent and all the plugins I'm not saying that but I think it's just more interesting if you combine it with hardware synthesizers or those synthesizers which are not used by everyone that's my that's my opinion so yeah so this is I mean, you can tell this lead is just so spicy. Basically, I think the this top, yeah, this uh, top lead, it's really nice. It's so clean and sharp. It comes from Zebra and from Adam Sabo's Zebra sound set. The guy is a legend. This one actually is a great sound. Um, what else do we have here? I think I, I actually tweaked a lot in the end with on these bass lines because they're kind of uh, clashing at some point of, on the frequency spectrum but I did it in the different in the the separated project you know so I think that's it um, do you have any questions about any sounds or anything <laughs> because I can open the the final project and show the mixing oh, yeah I are actually grouped the bases here already yeah o OT OTT on it yeah that's interesting so I, I actually used a mid side EQ on the bass lines for some reason yeah just to keep the low end mono I guess Probably it was way too stereo, I think. Mm. Yeah, I usually cut out the low end of uh, pretty much everything but the kick drum and the bass line. Because obviously you don't really need to have anything on the on these percussion or hi hats or clap sounds like below 150 hertz. As you can see, there's some rumble in this clap sample already, which doesn't make any sense. It doesn't even sound different. It just uh, eats up a lot of headroom from uh, from your mix if you keep those low ends in in the instruments. But it's like basic mixing. It, if you go to YouTube, how to mix my uh, track, this is like the first rule: cut the low end on everything, but the bass line. Um, 
I don't really use presets on, on Trash anymore. I used to use some, but I don't remember the names. But lately I, I'm just experiment, experimenting, which is much better because the results gonna be different every time. Um, actually, I'm playing on the river on this Saturday. Uh, so I'm visiting my friend and and the other guys we are gonna have some small party on this Saturday so we're gonna stream there from I think about from 4 p.m. GMT approx to so come join us we're gonna have some party together again some small one yeah this is Cubase I use Cubase for like 15 years and I just I just got used to it. If I would start now, I would probably start with Ableton, but I just know every single feature on Cubase at this point, and I just too comfortable to to change it at this point. Yeah, so this is the final mix down where I actually just focused on on the sonical things i actually added some some effects sounds here <laughs> i mean i think you can tell it's more like it's punchier it's more glued together and it's a cleaner mix Oh, what a surprise! I actually don't have OTT on this one because you know what? Oh, here <laughs> I can't actually leave OTT out. Yeah, but the thing is, I n I don't even remember what was the last time I used the Wave C1 compress compressor, and it just works so good as a side chain on this track, which is funny. Because I always use like uh, Kickstart, Nico Romero's Kickstart, or LFO tool, or Volume Shaper. But in this case, I, somehow I felt like I want to experiment. So I used uh, Wave C1, which is like a million years old plugin. <coughs> so I used it as a sidechain, and it just so it works so good. <laughs> This is another funny technique um, where I just put an LFO tool to just cut the really first FX or transients from uh, from the instruments in this case in the bass lines just to, to keep the the kicks transient the, the most important in the mix because if you if you check it <laughs> So, I'm not sure if you hear the difference, but oh, oh, fuck. Sorry, it's just so hard to manage with uh, one hand because I didn't manage to. F to buy a, a microphone st microphone stand yet, but I'm working working on it, guys. So I need to hold it with my, with my hand. <clears throat> so it's like a really subtle difference by you about in the mix when you can have all the little subtle differences. In the end, it's gonna be it's gonna make actually a quite huge difference. All these little details just like to to keep the uh, things separated just make room for every sound you know in the just uh, 
keeping them separated a little bit to not clash at some points. Uh, I think that's the point. That's a, that's a key in a good mix, I, I feel. So yeah, I boosted uh, the sides on, on the synthesizers. <laughs> again it's really subtle but by in the end it's it's gonna make a difference um, actually you can play a lot with uh, the mid sign EQing sometimes you can trick actually the ears to make something louder in the mix without eating up too much space in the mix if you use the stereo inf information like smart <laughs> It takes a lot of time and experimenting. Yeah, track spacer. I actually use track spacer sometimes. It's just I think it's it's an older project and I didn't use it yet. Yeah, that's that's a great plugin. I I recommend it as well. Track spacer. Yeah, what else, guys? Um, not even sure what if there's anything more interesting in this project. And just if you have any questions, just shoot it. Not even have to be music related. It can be uh, about anything. <laughs> Oh yeah, this comes from uh, Virus again. This is one of my favorite, like, really high top lead from Virus. This is actually from my own sound set. I made a sound set for for Access Virus DI. <coughs> you can grab it from freshly squeezed samples. Yeah, I married. <laughs> She's watching actually right now, I I suppose. No, I actually don't use master chain when I'm producing. So the point is when I when I um, create a, a musical idea, when I got inspired and I'm just throwing sounds into the project, just having fun, you know. I don't even care about the sounding. Usually the the track sounds like shit in in that in that part of the process, but then, as I told you, I I export all the stems and I start to focus on the mixing of the track. I'm not sure if it's the right way, but that's how I do it because it works for me. I just tr love to separate these process processes because I I found myself that if if I'm trying to focus on the mixing when I'm in the like in a ins musically inspired state of mind, it just makes my brain confused. And it, it, for me, it works much better if I separate this in my workflow. <clears throat> so I never use like a master chain when I'm producing. Um, but let's check the master chain of, oh yeah, that's quite interesting. So the final master chain has uh, again, this is just for the game management. It doesn't do anything really. So there's a saturation plugin. I mean, can, you can tell the difference, right? If I'm turning it off, it sounds quite harsh, like the highs. Hmm. Interesting. 
yeah so uh, I use this a little like glue saturation plugin uh, on the final mix down and I think it it makes the whole thing more pleasant to the ears again it sounds more natural somehow especially for the high end <laughs> And then um, what? What else? Me as Tita. So yeah, that's what, that was my wife. Um, I love her. We were together for like I don't even remember. Fifteen, fifteen lovely years together in everything. So yeah, I wish everyone such a partner uh yeah what else so use saturation try try to experiment with saturation on on everything it, it, it makes everything just more natural because you boost those lovely overtones also if you don't know what are overtones or harmonic series just google it and because that's, I think that's such a main key element in the music. Also, not not even in the music theory, but also in mixing. Hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. I guys, I think I'm wrapping the stream up because I'm doing it for almost ninety minutes. And hope I could sh I, I, I showed something to you, some interesting details about the production. I feel like I didn't show too much. I'm I'm not a good teacher. I I'm afraid, but I tried my best. <laughs> so thanks so much for coming. So my so this EP just came out today on Anjuna Beats, Delirium, and Soul Seeker. Uh, you can uh, stream it, buy it on your favorite platform or anywhere and thanks for any kind of support it, it means a lot and especially these days for musicians like me or us it's just means a lot really and thanks so much for every support and yeah to, tomorrow i'm gonna do a stream on my own channel because we are celebrating the lovely Annabelle sanchez she's having her birthday and on Friday we are having a small chat with Garrett from the office on the Anjuna channel so come join us and on Saturday I'm doing another live stream from from the river with my friends so guys thanks so much again for coming here I love you all and uh, hang in there I can't wait to see you all somewhere sometime and thanks so much for everything really it means a lot have a great night or morning or afternoon and goodbye.